Welcome back to the second channel guys. In today's video, we're going to be putting a .177 caliber air gun head to head with a .22 caliber air gun head to head to head to a .22 caliber long rifle. These two are air guns. That one's an actual gun. And they're all used for roughly the same thing. Small game and target shooting. So in today's video, testing them, we're going to talk about the price, how easy they are to use, accuracy test, and damage test against ballistics gel and real life animals. <laughs> Peter's watching now. About to get reported or something. But yeah, check it out. This right here is Ethan, the cameraman. This is his air gun. It's a gamo something. 0.17777 pellet. That's what it is. Really small. There it is compared to my finger. This here is my air gun. It is a PCP Benjamin. That is the pellet it shoots. A 0.22 pellet. This is the 22 long rifle. That is the bullet weight. That's not it. This is the bullet that it shoots. It's the same caliber as this air gun. However, we're going to see the difference today. I don't know where this came from. But yeah, I mean, we're going to test it out. First things first, let's go over a little bit of theory. One of the big differences between all of these is the weight of the bullet. Let me hold them all in my hand. And you guys can see the weight difference. Just between the 177 and the 22 caliber, that's literally double. We're going from 7.4 grains or grams. And then with the 22 caliber pellet, we're going up to 14.3 grams or grains i'm not really sure regardless it is double the weight now with the 17 caliber pellet that means that it can generally go faster than the heavier 22 caliber but if you want to make the 22 caliber go just as fast you just have to put more air behind it which usually costs more in the gun itself and then putting it up against a 22 long rifle if you guys know a lot about bullets you'll know that only this piece which is copper it flies out the brass and the powder inside of it does not come out of the gun but it is still bigger I'm going to say twice the weight, just a guess, of the 22 caliber belt. So in each of these steps, you're doubling weight of bullets. Pretty cool. And that's what we're going to test out today. Now bear with me. I'm going to tell you a little bit of science, okay? The lighter your bullet, the more it is pushed around by wind and air resistance. The heavier the bullet, the less it's going to get pushed around by air. Which means on a slight breeze, the heavier bullets are going to do better. On a heavy breeze, heavier bullets are definitely going to do better. As for cost, these two are about $4 for 250 pellets. That comes out to 4 divided by 250, you're coming out at 1.5 cents per shot. That's pretty cheap. On the other hand, you got a 22, 10 cents per shot. At the same time, when you're shooting a 22, all you got to do to shoot it is this. With this air gun, you have to do the same thing, just but you have to do for about five minutes beforehand. On this one, it's actually a single shot. You have to break the barrel down, put a BB in, clamp it back up, and then shoot, do the whole process again. Now just real quick, these two are powered by air. This one is powered by a little explosion inside the barrel. These two have very little legislative restrictions, which pretty much means you can shoot it in a city, and you can also have it shipped straight to your house for this. You can't really shoot it in the city or maybe a town, and you also have to have it shipped to a special gun dealer, go there, do a background check just to get it. Now our next topic for my TED talk has nothing to do with the air gun. Well, let's just discuss Ethan's paint job. I'm gonna let you do the talking on this one. It was a uh, nightly experiment. It was like 10 o'clock at night and I was like, huh, I'm gonna paint this. And turns out I didn't have all the colors I was wanting. Yeah. So I just tried to mix them and then, yeah. Now we have the Japanese flag on a gun. Yep, blue, black, orange, some little pink splatter spot. We're not really sure where that one came from though. Uh-uh. It's on there, though. One thing for sure, you will most likely never get this one confused with someone else's gun. I hope not. Someone else can pull that off. Dang, they're doing something. Yeah. As for this one, no paint job at all. That's exactly how it came. But for this little 22, I bought it for $100 at the flea market. And then just came back, threw some pine needles on it, and spray painted it. Wow. I think it turned out pretty cool. It does look good. You can it? see where I hold it, though. Right there and right here, it's turning brown and wearing off. You know, that's another important thing. Rough estimate, average cost of a 22 like this, going to run you a about two hundred dollars for a brand new one yeah brand new same thing for this one gonna run you about 250 same thing for this and about 150 that has a lot to do with the quality brand and type but rough estimate honestly they all run about the same price you can get a more expensive air gun you can get a lower expensive 22 let's do some accuracy tests i got this box right here we're gonna shoot them from about 30 yards away and see what kind of groups we can get out of each one i'm gonna be aiming at that little dot right there with the point one seven seven i'll be aiming right here at that little dot right there with the point 22 i'll be aiming 
in right here at that little dot with the point two two L R. Now as we go down here to where we're going to set up the target, I just want to say this. This accuracy test alone is not going to tell us any definite answer because accuracy comes down to pellet quality, gun quality, gun wear, shooter, a bunch of stuff. But this right here is just going to give us a general idea. And we're going to see if these are capable of hitting the squirrel's head, which is about only that big. So you don't really have a big target on a squirrel. All right, let's get to shooting. All right, let's, first, let's shoot the first shots. To load this one, like I was saying, you just break the barrel down, pump it one time, put a pellet in right up here up top, just like bada boom, bada bing. Close it back up and it's ready to go. Before we actually shoot them on paper, I want to do a little sound test. We don't have one of them fancy sound readers. I'm just use my ears and give you all a rough estimate. I'd give that about a 16 gigabytes. About 16? Yeah. Like iPod Touch 4th generation. Exactly. This one right here, it's a 22. In my experience, going to be a little bit louder. We'll let you guys be the judge. You know what? That one's actually kind of silent. It ain't bad, is it? No. This thing comes with a threaded barrel that you can put a suppressor on it, but they make it a really weird thread pattern. So I've not been able to find a suppressor. That one's about a 64. Give or take 64 gigabytes. What's your estimates for the 22 before you even shoot it? 256. We're just going to have to see. All right, the 22 long rifle. This is literally an explosion happening inside the barrel and going to be cracking the sound barrier with those. It's just pressurized air coming out of the barrel. So that's what's happening scientifically, the difference. This one's literally a miniature explosion. And to load this one, 128. 512. But you can get subsonics for this, which is about 256. All right, now for accuracy tests. We're going to start out with the 17 and just go boom, 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 and check out the data. And I'm going to be using this rest, so it should take me out of the equation as much as possible. All right, there's three shots from that one. Now we'll run three shots from the 22 air gun. Definitely a noticeable difference in sound. Is this in louder? Yeah. It is four times louder according to our gigabyte test. I'm looking through the scope. Air gun people will be cheering whenever we go check out the accuracy test. I will say this. This 22 long rifle ammo, it's not the expensive stuff. It's not the stuff I'd usually hunt with, but it is the standard ammo that you can find most places. Standard quality. I've still killed a lot of squirrels with it. Kendall, you realize your phone's right under where you're shooting, right? Yeah, my phone's holding up the box, so. I got about that much room for air. So you better hope that the scope's on really good. Yeah. If not, we're probably going. The phone store. Yeah. I didn't see a phone move. All right, let's go check them out. One thing you could definitely tell the difference, maybe not so much with the editing, but it's just simply the different types of reloads. I'm just trying to give y'all a test. You can get a MagFed 17. You can get a MagFed 22 air rifle. You can get a single shot 22 long rifle. You can get a break barrel 22 air rifle. You can get a bolt action 17. Those are just the ones that we have for a test. Don't take the quickness as something to really think about. Oh, wow. Come check out my phone first. That way they know what we're talking about. I was There's my phone. I was shooting right there with the 22. And uh, it's covered up in cardboard, so that's nice. Bet, bet. At least you got a phone still. Yeah, yeah. All right, so check it out. The 17, it wasn't sighted in with this ammo, but the general groups we got, that's still one and a half inch groups, not bad at all. And another thing with pellet guns, certain pellets work way better in certain guns than other pellets do. If you want to learn about that, click this video right here I done, and it shows it really good. As for the 22 air rifle, check that. That's literally the same hole. That's less than a quarter inch group, maybe even less than that. This pellet gun's also sighted in with these pellets. Pellets, and I figured out these pellets are best for it. As for the 22 long rifle, those aren't super high quality ammo, but still put them right in there, all right there together. Regardless, from this test, we learned that pretty much any of these can be super accurate, plenty enough accurate to hit whatever you're trying to hit. The 17 could maybe just, uh, you know, play around with the pellet because it's his air gun. He forgot his pellets and he hits pretty good with it. So. It shoots those uh, crossmen. I think they're called the destroyers the best. All right, now on to the damage test. We're bringing out ballistics gel, which simulates flesh, and we're going to see just how deep each of these penetrate. Check this out, my boy. Big shout out to Clear Ballistics for hooking us up with all this today. Sheesh, this is bussin' bussin'. This ballistic shell looks super fun to play with. Yeah, it's been through a lot. It hasn't had. It used to be more clear than it is. We have some different pellets in there, but that's not related to our test today. I'm going to be shooting one pellet, one pellet, one bullet. And we're going to see just how much the penetration makes a difference. I don't know. This test right here, is it going to tell us what's good for squirrels? Maybe. If the 22 air rifle penetrates that much, but the 17 only goes in that much, that may tell us a lot. But if the 22 long rifle goes in that much, that'll tell us that, you know what? Maybe the 22 long rifle's way more suited for bigger game like 
like a groundhog. I'm just gonna go straight into it and go backwards as the order I did. Starting off, 22 long rifle. All right, but before we actually shoot the gel, I wanna tell you guys, if you wanna support the channel in any way, the best way to do it is to buy some merch. This is the KG USA and Navy t-shirt. This is our best shirt. We've sold out before and we just now restocked. So if you guys want this shirt, pick it up at kennelgrade1.com slash shop or the first link in the description. You can also pick up the KG pocket knife in any color you would like. Use promo code LIVE10, all caps, and that's gonna get you 10% off whatever you want on the website. But now let's get in and let's shoot this ballistics gel. Here we go. Target was smoking. I don't know what that means. Go straight in to the 22 air gun. If you're an environmentalist and you like PETA or something, maybe an air gun's for you because it has less of a carbon footprint or something like that. Now on to the 177. I'm gonna have to hold over a little bit to compensate for it not being sided in with these pellets. Oh, that one smells funny after you shoot it. All right, what are your predictions? I'm, I don't really have any predictions. I feel like the 22 LR is just going to completely destroy blunt. everything. Yeah, and I'm not really sure about the other pellets, but we'll figure it out. 22 long rifle. Oh my goodness! Wait, what? The 22 long rifle. Part of it went all the way through. No way. Check it. So I remember where I shot. I shot the 22 long rifle right over here. This is its path of travel, right through here, and you can see a part of it even came all the way out the back and came out right there. I'm not saying a big piece of it, but part of it went all the way through. If you look down in there closely, you'll see a little piece of copper right in there. That's part of the copper jacket. But if you look at it from this angle, the 22 stayed true, fragmented a few pieces here and there, and then ended up somehow going an entire 16 inches. As for the 17, the 17 traveled all the way in this far, which is, I don't know, there it is compared to my finger, maybe four to five inches. That's pretty deep. As for the 22 caliber air rifle, it went in and only went about about half an inch to three quarters of an inch more. That pellet is way back there. As for the 22, we don't have the bullet to see if it exploded, but for these, we can do that. We can actually come in here, sponsored by AG Pocket Knife, and we can dig out these pellets to see what they did once they got inside. All right, that is the 17. Wow, you won't believe that. Look at that. You can see where the rifling actually grabbed the bullet to twist it. That's crazy. But at the same time, it didn't really deform any, so it didn't exactly expand. Most things like squirrels, you don't really need it to expand that much, but if it did expand, that would help a little bit. As for the 22, I'm going to have to go a little bit deeper. No problem for the pocket knife gun. We may try to get in there and see if I can find a part of the 22. Doing surgery right here. As for the 22, same thing. You can see the little pieces where it grabbed onto the rifling, but even though this is a hollow point, did not expand at all. So a hollow point in an air rifle does not do anything. So I don't even know why they make them. They really don't. They really don't. They do not expand. They just, it's just not what they do. Out of all those, they seem to have done pretty good. As for real life animals, here's a squirrel I killed with a 22 caliber. To be honest, at any distance at all, you can't really tell how big a squirrel is. The entry wound, not really sure where it was, but the exit wound is definitely on the other side of his head there. And then here's a squirrel I killed with the 17 caliber. That one's a lot bigger than the one we got yesterday, but we'll flip him over. Looks like I either got a headshot or a heart shot. I think I got a headshot though. At the end of the day, it's all about where you hit them and how far away you are when you hit them. I think either of those would kill a squirrel perfectly fine, but I do think with the 22 caliber pellet, you do have a little bit more room for error. As for the 22 long rifle, you have a lot of room for error. If you hit a squirrel right here with a 22 caliber gun, it's gonna blow it up, you're gonna kill it. For example, see those targets out there? Those are over 100 yards away. I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna shoot him with the 22. That's something I can't really do with a 22 air rifle. 22 long rifle, 100 yards. Not a problem at all, gets there really fast. I've hit it out there before, but the distance in drop is huge. How far does it drop at the far, you reckon? This one? All right, yeah. that one drops about eight inches, 100 yards, nothing crazy. Probably shouldn't be used for hunting. This one drops about three feet. There you go. Yeah, this one drops about three or four feet. I'm not even gonna try the 17 because I just don't know about it. Overall, you going squirrel hunting? Which one you pick? The 22 air gun, probably. Really? Because you can carry a whole lot more 250 rounds versus 50 rounds, and it's about the same weight. I'm probably gonna have to go with the 22 long rifle because as heavy as these bullets are and as fast as they are going, I'm able to have an effective range from about 10 yards all the way out to probably about 60 without having to hold over or hold under. I'm gonna go with this one, but both of those are more than capable of killing anything smaller than a groundhog. But now we wanna hear from you guys. Comment below, what do you use to hunt small game? If you hunt with an air gun, what kind? If you hunt with a 22 long rifle, what kind? And subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Click right over here if you wanna see that pellet test I was talking about earlier, or right over here for the time I went squirrel hunting 
hunting with my first shotgun. 